going on everybody? Back again on the RC Model X rebuild, redo. Um, in the last video didn't do a whole lot. I readjusted all the suspension links and got it where it would work again because I, I picked it up with no, no rear links at all. So, so far in this video I have installed a motor or ESC and radio and I've poorly rewired the uh, motor. They had a Dean's connector on it and the new uh, Hobby Wing quick run that I installed had a had standard bullet connectors and it's pouring down rain today and it's been a, just nasty and I can't get to a hobby shop to get new connectors so I just hacked them and taped them together so it's not permanent but I want to see this thing run. I want to see how it performs. Um, I also put on a set of brand new to me uh, axial SEX 10 shocks. Um, it's what I had on there, and not, I think one of them had a little bit of oil in it, and the other three were bone dry. And you can tell from the, how dirty the axles and everything were that they have been leaking for a long time. And of course I left all that dirt on there because why not. So, new shocks, I topped them all off. They were a little low too, right out of the box. Um, I did have one I'd overfilled this one, so I had to uh, take it back apart and get some of it out of there. But um, I put these on the upper mounts, <clears throat> the rears set on the lower mount on the axle, so I left them in the top mount now. I cut off the uh, the most, the highest mount, so it would fit our Forerunner body. And um, yeah, I just used this old RC4 drive three channel. Um, it does have a good three channel portion. It's got on, or left, off, and right kind of deal. Uh, my Spectrum, it just has an off or on third channel, so you can't run a winch or anything. Uh, but I don't have that hooked up yet, but it does have the uh, looks like a that's RC four drive winch on there, and he had had the controller on there, but he had wired it to his horn. This thing had a horn on it, and uh, it was kind of a mess. I couldn't tell what really went to what, so I just took it off at the connector and left all that mess out for right now. Um, the battery needs to set about right here. There's absolutely nowhere on this rig to put the battery, so uh, I mean these these chassis don't have any kind of battery plate or anything of that nature. So I think my only option for now is to zip tie or rubber band or something around the frame. Try to let it ride right here. It's just clear in the drive shaft, the output of the transfer case. And it's not interfering with our links at all. So I gotta find some rubber bands. It's ready to go. I'll turn this thing on. And I put out my switch right here. And the servo works great. It's just, it's Savox, so it's and it's well used Savog, so it is super glitchy. It likes to sing the song of its people quite loudly. And there's no there's no happy place for it to make it not there you go. Suspended. <laughs> so it's like I said, it's been pouring down rain today, and it's kinda lightened up right now, but the roads are a mess. I can't go anywhere. But I think I want to run this thing. So nothing I've put on it is waterproof. Now, I really want to get out there. I've got a lot of standing water, so i got to see what of my little crawl area is actually available. But I do want to get this out and uh, take it for a spin because, like I said, I really want to see this thing operate. See if I need to tweak the shocks at all. See how the body, the weight of it handles with these shocks. The only difference on these shocks, other than having fluid in them, are the single spring. The other ones were the dual rate springs. I really... These seem to settle lower. And that's, again, another thing I was after here is to get the ride height down a little bit. Right now it's sitting very low in the front. See we've got a fair amount of droop. We have almost as much up travel as we do down travel. And that's because again this chassis is all steel. Bumper steel. It's It's got some weight to it. So I'm hoping with the forerunner body with the hard top on and everything in the back it'll help balance that out and we can get some more droop in the rear. Because right now it's just a little bit, got a small amount of rake, not, not a whole lot. But uh, yeah. So I'm going to throw the body on and we'll get this thing running. Alright guys, so I had to move the speed controller and uh, receiver back further. The floorboard for the uh, Forerunner body, I thought I had that whole platform to use, but I had to move it back to clear it. So it is what it is. We're trucking right along. So find my on off switch. I guess I should have turned the radio on first. Our noisy servo. 
So like we got good gear reduction. Again, I don't know what turn that motor is. I just know it's a it's a nice Holmes Hobby motor. So uh, I'm sure it was not cheap. So let me go see what the rain's doing. See if we can get this bad boy out in the mud. Alright guys, so that was not perfect. Um, got wiring issue. It could just be my sketchy motor wires. Um, it could be the motor itself is had it. Um, I had to bring it in after I started. It kept surging and it would just cut off. And uh, I wrapped the entire motor wire in electrical tape. And it did it a lot less. So I don't know if that whole wire is bad. I did see one little nick in it up by the servo. Um, there did seem to be a correlation between the surging and the servo glitching, so I don't know if that's a related problem as well. Uh, we'll just have to see. I need to do some more updates to the wiring. May go ahead and just change out the motor. I'm not sure yet. We'll just have to uh, see what what we do. Other than that, though, um, it is geared a little slow for my flavor. I tend to go for like a 27 turn crawler motor on on trucks like this get a little more wheel speed and this may have it once the the wiring issue sorted out we got it down a little lower it sets just a little bit higher in the back still um, I do need to adjust my wheelbase bring the rear axle up just a two or three millimeter because it is rubbing back here and uh, that bothers me a little bit so that's what happens with these the four link is hinged so far up on the truck that your axles are like this and I, I spaced it a little bit to bring the axle pinion angle, or you know, normal, where the axle wasn't, the pinion angle wasn't facing up, basically. And uh, it lined up pretty good with the Hilux body, but once we lower it, that brings the axles out. They go up and away from each other, and that changed our wheelbase quite a bit. Um, the front, front spot on, we've got all this extra room from not having the stock bumper on there. So when it goes full compressed, we have plenty of space. Uh, the back not so much so we'll probably do that in the next video um, deal with our electronics issues but other than that I think the only limitation it had was the tires these tires are pretty dry rotted and now uh, being soaking wet running through all the mud and stuff out there that held us up quite a bit 
But uh, the truck itself, I mean, I, at the end there, it climbed the first step on my front porch. And none of my other trucks will do that. So that's a pretty pretty bold accomplishment and as far as my, my trucks go. So I think there's some potential here. We just got to fine tune it. Um, again, I, I in the other video, I did the, the 1.9 or 1.5s. And the problem with the 155s were they stuck out so far that every time you turned, there was an issue with rubbing. So you can see from the front, dead on of this, these 19s are super narrow and they I like the way they, they fit width-wise. But uh, again, we're, we're, we may come to fender cutting here before long and put something even meatier on it. Um, I wasn't digging the 155 black wheels and the mud thrasher seemed a little bit much I'd like to keep something more like this, but if we're going to go more serious crawler with it, then, uh, you know, when you start rethinking the way we're going about stuff here. So, anyways, I appreciate you guys watching, and uh, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. And thanks again to Ray Wallace for giving me such a good deal on this Model X truck. And uh, we'll get it all, all the kinks worked out and get it running good before long. I think the 400 body is a good fit for it, and uh, I plan on keeping it there, so... Anyways, I appreciate it. Y'all have a good day and keep it scale. I'll see y'all in the next video.